Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Wednesday, May 4th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of charts and how they can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, before I get to the watch list, I first want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering here in a couple of days. So if you like what you see here and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can, how it should be used to help build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there below the video that you can click to get signed up. So again, if you like what you see, then certainly get signed up for the free class. First off, a couple of clarifications. Number one, the price you see over here will still be changing as I go through the various charts along with the candlestick here. That's because the market is still open. Uh, so, and I like to do these videos because when the market's still open, sometimes we can capture some really late day uh, type price movement. That's pretty uh, entertaining and interesting. However, what I talk about, because the market is still close enough to being done for the day, will still be relevant on Wednesday. And then as far as you know, the charts I'm using, I'll be doing the 30 minute time frame. So for you beginners out there, what that means is each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol SE, SN, uh, which is a penny stock, which is why that price isn't moving uh, super fast, just because uh, you know you know it's a penny stock, so moving one penny actually requires quite a bit of effort. Uh, but you can see right here, this candlestick there is changing. But overall, what makes this the most interesting is how the price has pulled back from way up there. So that was a very nasty pullback. There's there's no need to beat around the bush. But to give credit or credit to, not only did that pullback stop, but now late day, you can see a very nice recovery is underway including the final portion of the day here, which as we watch, and like I said, that's why I like to do these when the, the market's still open, you can see a couple of nice green candles forming right between our very eyes. So all this leads to a very valid question of is this the start of something bigger back to the upside? Now think about that question. In order for me to even be able to ask that question, what needs to first happen? Well, something worthwhile needs to first happen. Something interesting needs to first happen. And that has all definitely happened as I've already explained. Big move down and now a recovery back upwards. So let's see if this is the start of something bigger. To be fair, maybe it's not. Maybe this thing just rolls right back over. However, that is a two-sided coin. Meaning, well, maybe it is. Maybe this thing keeps on hustling and grinding and then tomorrow gets up into the 60 cent range. You know, no guarantees, but the point here, and that's the idea behind a watch list is finding unique situations, finding inter interesting situations, and then watching them to see if they behave in a way that, you know, fits into any sort of trade uh, plan or trade strategy that you may have. So yeah, if you like penny stocks, SESN, certainly a very interesting uh, set of circum circumstances outplaying here. Next one, BWV, same exact scenario of a very, very crazy set of circumstances, especially when you look at the bar, the beginning of the day, essentially no volume at all. And then the volume really ramped itself up and you can see the, pro, or the, the price followed suit. So like I said, just a, a very interesting situation that is worth keeping an eye on. And from a pullback perspective, I meaning if you're somebody that likes to play more so pullbacks, an interesting level from that point of view gonna be right down there around that $5 mark. If you're somebody that likes to play breakouts, then nothing fancy, nothing complicated here at all. Literally just a question of where did the parting momentum finally stop today? And that was essentially right up there at $7.10. So keep a close eye on that level moving forward. But at the core, no doubt about it, absolutely crazy price movement, crazy volume. So does all this continue into Wednesday? Definitely worth keeping an eye on. Next one, AMC, very, very impressive bounce today. After what started off a very bad start. I mean, things are looking shaky. You can see that opening part of the day right there. The price was drifting down, drifting down, drifting down. Then all of a sudden leveled out and then kaboom up it went. But what do you know? And this will mean a bit more to those of you that have watched uh, the, the past videos, but where did the big kaboom essentially run out of steam right here? Once again at $16, which for you longer time viewers, you know, I've talked about time and time again um, and kind of in a cruel way because it did actually temporarily break above it, went not that high and then just right back it went. Uh, but overall, taking a step back, it did still make progress and in fact has converted this back into being an area of support. And that's just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, they tend to act as support. So ideally speaking, now moving forward, you want to see the price stay above 1520 because what you don't want is if the price were to come down here and then just continue on down because what's that doing? Well, at that point, that is quite literally putting the price right back to where it was. And I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but price movements with genuine power are not gonna go back to where they were. They're gonna show at least some sort of quote unquote sign of progress. And in this situation, that sign of progress is being defined as 1520. So 1520 key level of support, $16 key level of resistance. Next one, CRXT, very, very impressive bounce. 
And I realize I'm standing the obvious when I point that out right there. But this all does bring in the valid question of, okay, yeah, great bounce, but is this the start of a truly strong bounce? Is this the start of something that's actually going to pick up traction? And I have no idea. But by using that level right there and following the same logic we just talked about, which is why I wanted to put these back to back at 62 cents, that's going to help us answer that question. Because if this is the start of a truly strong bounce, well, the price is going to start to show signs of progress moving forward, which I know you just heard. And in this situation, the sign of progress right there at 62. Because again, if the price were to come down there and then break down below it, what is that doing to the price? That is quite literally putting the price, well, right back to where it was. And as I just mentioned, price movements that go back to where they were, not exactly a sign of genuine power or true strength. But I mean, nothing can go straight up. So if the price were to come down there and then behave like that and start to work its way back upwards, now all of a sudden, what would you have? Well, you'd have a set of lows there. You'd have lows there. And if you envision those as stair steps, at least at that point, you now have progress being made in the upwards direction. So keep a close eye on 62 cents. In terms of areas of resistance, General level of resistance moving forward gonna be right up there at around the 87 cent mark. So still some leeway to go up to that uh, potential problem point. But overall, no doubt about it, very nice bounce today. But is there genuine strength behind it? Let's see if the price can start to make progress moving forward. Next one, CHGG, an absolute uh, just bloodbath this morning. But what makes this interesting, and this will mean a bit more to those of you that have traded for a while, but for those of you that have, I'm sure you've seen stocks that gap down, and after they gap down, they just do something like this the rest of the day. Just bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and drift downwards. That was not the case here. Not only did the price not go downwards, it actually made a move up and then just started to go sideways up around this area. So that leads to a very valid question of, hey, maybe this is some sort of bottom that's forming. Now, let me be very clear. There are no guarantees. But my point here is this, it's at least a plausible thought process to have. Not a guaranteed thought process, so that's why risk management rules and all that matter, but it's at least not some sort of random uh, you know, situation. Case in point, let's say the price was doing something like this, just drifting down, 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 and I'm sitting here saying, hey, this could be some sort of bottom. You'd be like, what are you talking about? All the price is doing is going down, right? So in that situation, it would make that would not be plausible. But in this situation, while not guaranteed, it makes sense. So a key level of support, in my mind, to keep an eye on, is just gonna be kind of the bottom part of this little sideways range right here at $16.50. And then, uh, you know, you can see the top of this little range that was forming right up there at the $18 mark. So in some sense, it's just basically a little sideways channel has started to form. Again, bottom of the channel, $16.50, top of the channel, $18. And if this is indeed the start of, uh, you know, kind of some sort of bottoming formation, uh, then yeah, there, there's potentially a lot of upside uh, room. Next one, SNOA, and what I like about this one is it demonstrated the ability today to move very nicely. I mean, that was a big gap up. However, the price has pulled back, which may sound a little backwards to say that's a good thing, but it is a good thing from, uh, you know, kind of the, anno or not annoyance, but, you know, kind of the worry, the voice in your head that, you know, says, are, are you sure you're not the sucker that's buying the top? Are you suffering from FOMO right now, fear of missing out? Are you chasing the price? Well, at, that, at this point in time, that's already happened, right? The suckers that bought the top that were suffering from FOMO were already buying up around there. So now don't get me wrong, just because the price is pulled back and just because you're no longer the sucker that's buying the top, that doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be a winning trade. My point here is at least that worry has been alleviated from any sort of trade plan. And along with that pullback gives the opportunity to draw a very nice defined tread line right there. And I like nice defined levels because you know a bunch of people are watching it. So call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want it can produce some very dynamic movements. So again, nothing is guaranteed, but is it plausible? Is it valid to think that if the price came up to that tread line and then broke up through it, that that break right there could create some nice additional buying pressure? That is absolutely a valid thought process to have. In terms of levels of support, key level to watch moving forward, gonna be right down there at $3.30. And if that level doesn't quite hold up, next level down there at that pink line, which is the 200 period moving average currently valued at, let's just call it the $3 mark. So let's see what happens with it. Next one, NIO, still hasn't really done anything from past videos I've done. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, from a broader sense, the price has just continued to chop back and forth, chop back and forth. However, the price is now starting to get near a very interesting potential breakout area. So yes, there's still work that needs to be done. But the point here being is that when I draw that tread line like that, you can see that tread line also matches up very closely with that pink line, which you now know is that 200 period moving average at 1808, that red line there basically at 18. So right around here, general point being, right around $18, and let's split the difference and call it five cents. So 1805 is gonna be one of those levels that is highly, highly watched. And as I just talked about with the previous stock, 
No, or there are no guarantees, but self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want. Is it plausible? Is it valid to think that if the price is actually able to build up enough strength to push up through these couple areas of resistance, that that could create additional buying pressure because people are buying because it's a breakout? Yes, that is not a guaranteed thought process, but a more than valid and plausible thought process. So keep an eye on 1805. In my mind, that is by far the most interesting dynamic of this moving forward. Next one, BTTX, quite a move today. I did this one uh, in yesterday's video, I think. I guess don't quote me on that. But regardless, even if I didn't, definitely needs to be updated here as it continues to trend upwards. And after today has built itself a nice little pattern here. So the top of this pattern, main area of resistance right there at $2.25. Move that up a bit more. Key level of support here, gonna be this general tread line right there. In fact, let me change that to green to represent more so a bullish attribute of things and then just to make this all one color maybe easier to see we have our resistance we have our support we have our big momentum move let's put the golf hole down here to make it more visual and this would be a bull pennant pattern so if you like to play stocks down below the five dollar mark you like to play bull pennants then this is certainly something that uh, I, i'd say you should watch uh, and keep an eye on moving in the next couple of days next one tsla tesla and overall a very interesting day particularly that opening 30 minutes and then after that got very difficult uh, and I did trade it today, made a total of $60 on it because at least for me and my strategy, so I'm not saying that it was bad because I realize we all have different strategies. We all have different risk tolerances. But this, after that opening 30 minutes, which was pretty crazy, things got really, really choppy, just down, up, down, up, down, up. But in doing so has now created some very interesting dynamics that I'll be keeping an eye on. Namely, what I'm gonna do here is actually tilt this level down towards that tread line at that area because you can see now you that it's, these couple areas here did a good job of forecasting a couple areas. So my point here is that moving forward, right up around, let's just call it the $920 mark, gonna be one of those, we'll call it a self-fulfilling prophecy points where once again, does not guarantee anything, uh, but in my mind makes a whole lot of rational sense that if this thing can break up through 920, that could very well create quite a bit of upwards buying pressure. So keep an eye on that. And then as far as supports are concerned, in fact, I'm just gonna go ahead, eh, I'll leave that one down there. Just as a reference point. But in the very near term, gonna have a key level right there at that $900 mark. You can see several times today, the price got right down around that area and it held strong. And then if 900 doesn't quite hold up, you do have that purple line there, the 50 period moving average valued at 889. Uh, but overall, definitely some very, very well-defined levels and a very interesting situation here headed into Wednesday. Next one here, AMD. Now I do realize that there is earnings and where or where is this thing gonna ultimately open up? I'm not sure, but my idea here is let's just map out some broad levels of uh, what will matter after earnings. And you know, depending on where it opens up, that'll kind of dictate uh, you know, just how things look from the technical point of view. Now the level of support that as of now doesn't seem like it'll be coming into play, but you never know with earnings, is gonna be down here at $84. So again, I realize that the price closed all the way up there. But with earnings, uh, you know, if it gets really bad, I would define quote unquote really bad as the price going down to 84 and then even worse yet, breaking down below it. So 84, certainly gonna be a very important level of support to keep an eye on and see if it comes into play. Now it may not come into play at all with earnings, which would be a good sign uh, and a bullish sign. Uh, but if it does, like I said, given where the price closed, uh, that would imply that shakings were pretty earning or pretty uh, sketchy. And then as far as areas of resistance are concerned, you can see that the price essentially closed right up here at 91.50, that red line, which I've talked about several times before. So, I mean, the power of charts, look at how stubborn this area has been. And then today just could not get any sort of separation. And it also had that pink line there, the 200 period moving average, as I've said. So it was kind of a double whammy right there. But pointer being is if the price gets above 91.50, the further up above 91.50 it is, the more bullish the market is finding the earnings. So that's really the best way to gauge this is there has been this sideways channel and let's see how the price behaves relative to again, $84, the bottom of the channel support, and then 91.50, the top of the channel uh, resistance. Now, if it just fluctuates somewhere in the inside, then within all actuality, not a whole lot is going on relative to the general pattern here that's formed over the past couple of weeks. Uh, but any sort of breaks above or below, uh, you know, gives them more insight into just how bad or how good the market feels about those earnings. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool of technical analysis, how it can, how it should, how it should not be used and why it can be powerful to help build consistency, then certainly get signed up for the free class. Like I said, it'll be a couple of days, Thursday, May 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, if you would like for me to continue to put in the time and effort I required to get this content out to you, then please help me out with some basic things. Hit the like button, 
Leave a simple comment, even if it's saying hi. Tell me what you traded today. Tell me what you're watching tomorrow. But those two things go a long way in communicating to me that I'm not wasting my time. And as long as I know I'm not wasting my time because you enjoy these videos, then I have no problem at all, like I said, to putting in the required time and effort uh, to create this kind of content for you. So again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more, certainly get signed up for that free class. Everybody take care. Have a good one.